being said, let's jump into the innovation algebra toolkit. Now, Hannes has spoken about these tools in previous sessions. He shows all of the things that you can do with them. I'm going to just walk through a very practical use case based on marketing and discovering how I can do things that not only did I not think possible, but things I would have never thought of three months ago. It, it, the rabbit hole gets a little bit nuts. <laughs> so here's, I've done enterprise con content for um, like 20 years, the bulk of my career. And here is an exact, this is exactly what I would use <laughs> if I were, if I were managing a, a, a content engine. Um, you know, you have your different buyer stages, you have different uh, levels of engagement. And within that, to your best knowledge, you build assets to support these things, to build your brand and build your company. And this is exactly what I did in my last job. It looked like that. Here's my planning. Here's the, the things that I wanted to do. And here's the justification for the rationale for where they fit in a, in a buyer's journey. This is, this is a pretty laborious work. If you do it by yourself, you're researching every phase. That's why you have kind of generic looking content. It's very difficult to personalize. Also, according to Forbes, Forrester, and me, <laughs> most of the content that you produce in B2B marketing is completely useless. Like 60%, I think, is a, a generous number. It's more, more like 80%. <laughs> it doesn't even see a single customer eyeball. And if it does, it's it's kind of sub, it's a bit marginal. I think of, I've probably created in my career, you know, 10,000 PowerPoint slides, and I'm pretty sure 8,000 of them were garbage. <laughs> but that 5%, it carries the weight for the rest of the marketing assets that you produce. You have a few good things. And when I think about what, what makes, like within my experience, what makes those things good is that they were very precise. They were very contextual to a specific audience. The message was tailored and, the, and it resonated that way and it performed better. The, the more closely you align it to what your audience wants to see, the, the better it, it will perform. And if you look at B2B companies, enterprise companies across the US, this, is, this represents billions of dollars that they spend on marketing that kind of is to build nothing. And it represents billions of dollars of missed pipeline having you know, a wasted effort. Also, if you go to LinkedIn, uh, you get inundated by this growing pile of digital garbage. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of companies are using generative AI to contribute to that pile of garbage because it's easy and efficient to create quick communications that are kind of generic. Hannes and I started working on what I'm kind of calling the Lean Team AI contextual marketing engine. This is using the IA tools, the super prompts and knowledge capsules. He'll he'll go through and talk about that a little bit later. Playing to, so this particular application plays to the strengths of AI. AI is a very good writer and it can be programmed and skilled to be a great writer. AI loves to solve problems. I mean, it just lives for it. You know when, if you're in chat GTP and you give it a task and the response is, wow, I love that idea. I'm going, I'm enthusiastic about working with this and I can see value in the prompt that you've given me. You know, you're on the right track. If your response is, okay, here it is, here's your task. You know, you have not passed the generative AI bar and you should try again. <laughs> AI loves to simulate and role play. Uh, I think it lives for that. It's very, very good at it. So you take these three things and we're, we're noodling on, okay, so how do we take the innovation algebra toolkit to market? And I'm using, I'm using Maestro, which is a super prompt, and I'm just asking it to solve my problem. My first inclination was to build and craft a marketing strategy similar to the one that I shared earlier, your traditional marketing strategy. If you go into generative AI and say, how do I build a marketing strategy? You're going to get exactly or something very similar to what I produced. 
But if you ask it different questions, how do I get customers? And what companies are going to buy this product? Who inside that company is going to use it? How do we reach that person? And how do we convince them to buy our product? You get a different set of answers, which can guide a new type of marketing system. So here is like the exact response that I got. Maestro thinks based on the information that I gave it, I gave it a lot of contextual information. He thinks our ideal customer profiles are tech and software companies, financial services, healthcare, e-commerce, and automotive. So I just picked one. Okay, so why don't you flesh out a healthcare company and help me build a knowledge capsule for that healthcare company? Here's the response. It created a, a fictitious healthcare company, added some flavor to it. I use that to create what, what we call knowledge capsules. So I have the innovation algebra knowledge capsule. I have the ICP knowledge capsule. I use that to create a healthcare specific ICP and a healthcare specific persona based on who's, who's going to be the most, the person most likely to have influence on this, using it or purchasing it. And with that information, I used Maestro to create a healthcare specific value proposition. This is the value proposition that it came up with. You'll notice the modes. I love the, the modes. This is uh, Falcon mode. And if you notice the, the image that we used for the meetup is Falcon and a squirrel. I think Connus called it a feral <laughs> because of the modes of thinking that this prompt uses. So we're in Falcon mode and expert speak to come up with the value proposition for this healthcare organization. So using all of that information into, uh, I think one of the most brilliant super prompts that we have, it named itself Leonardo 2.0, the universal archetype, which is like the DNA of a human. It's, it's like blank DNA that you program to become a very, very realistic persona with, with fascinating depth. Um, to become the VP of AI uh, for a healthcare organization. And now here's the write-up that the VP gave. You know, I'm a visionary VP. I'm going to do this. I work with this organization. I'm not just a technologist. You know, I'm, ethics are important to me. It, it really crafted this elaborate persona. Now I can speak to this persona and I'm just going to ask it, okay, <laughs> Design, I'm going to have it do the work for us. Okay, build a content strategy for us to engage you. This is the content, this is the buyer's journey format for the content strategy she came up with. Okay, you need to do this, 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 and this. Here's the things that I need to see from you that were going to influence me in a purchasing decision. Here's, here's what's going to influence me from zero awareness to consideration. Okay, fantastic. I'm just going to keep asking questions and have this AI persona fill in the blanks on what we should produce, what she needs to hear from us that's going to intrigue her enough to evaluate the product. You know, what do you, what would intrigue you to learn more? What article can we write? What social media posts do you, or would you pay attention to? What would you look for in a use case from us? And then down to write the ideal script that an AI sales rep would use on a call with you. And I, I love the results she came up with this. I've got all the, I've got all the evidence here. So I love the script that she wrote for herself. I mean, if you can imagine, this by itself is, has immense value to any, to sales in an organization. If you work with ADRs and BDRs, I know I saw Eric Charles on the call, VP of marketing at exactly. Um, and I know that this is a, an interesting exercise to have an AI write a script for your sales reps to call that's very tailored and very specific to, to genre, to a person. Now, if we'll say in our hypothetical journey, an ADR does get this person and does call them and is using something like Gong. Gong has a transcript of that call that we can turn into a knowledge capsule and then enrich this persona with very, very specific knowledge of the challenges that they've identified, how to work with their organization, 
and and so on. And then we we use that incredibly enriched persona to advise us on the rest of our journey. Okay, now enriched persona, tell us how do we build a demo? What do you want to see in our demo? And this incredibly enriched persona, you give it tasks, which I find amazing. If you can imagine giving a VP, you know, a customer a task, okay, write an executive brief for yourself that justifies the purchase of the IA tools. Build a pitch deck that you can use to convince all the stakeholders in your company how to buy these tools. And you know what you might think is, well, these materials are you know subpar. They they are not. They are very, very good. At least a good seventy percent of the way there towards actually building high performing assets to do these these things. You know the product demo, and then finally let's let's prep for the perfect pitch. I'm going to use a new tool. Um, our pro our Prospect has identified other people that will be in this meeting. There's a CTO, a data scientist, and a CDO in addition to her. Let's build knowledge capsules for each one of these people and let the influencer advise us on what we can say to influence these people. It may not be perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than using a canned script I mean, like world's better <laughs> than using a canned script. And since you can do this so rapidly, anybody in the organization can do it. I, I envision marketing controlling these knowledge capsules and, and brand capsules and having sales create on-demand content for themselves to support their sales effort. These are things that you would never do like a year ago in a, in a, a traditional marketing organization. You just People just don't have time for that. But now you do. And these are really cool things that you can generate with it. On-demand content. And here's the slides and the script that she came up with to pitch to this audience. You know, taking into account four different personas, taking into account what innovation algebra does, the value proposition, uh, the needs in their organization. You have a very good script and good tile organization. You don't have to take this. You can read. The great thing is you can reconfigure it. I have my on-demand um, lean team marketing content creators. This is a separate prompt that's specific towards just building that content out, building it out very rapidly and highly tailored to a specific audience from ads, PowerPoint decks, white papers, demo script, um, you name it. I mean, it, the possibilities continue on. They This is the, just the beginning. It's like a little tiny ice cube on the top of the iceberg. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's where I'm going to leave you off. The lean team is currently locked. Uh, we're, we're at a point we've been doing a lot of innovation, a lot of development, and, and we're kind of dangerously vulnerable to uh, copycats, I suppose. So, so we've locked down the lean team. I give anybody here access to it. If you ask me, you can play around with any of these super prompts and I have an offer. I would love to pilot this right now. It's just theoretically what you can do, but I'd love to pilot it. I'll pilot it for free for, you know, the right type of organization. If it's, if you're interested, if you have a startup, you want to try to do some different type of marketing, I'll you know, just let me know, send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm not giving my phone number because I don't answer it anyway, <laughs> but reach out to me. Let's see if it's the right fit. And then I'll pilot this product for you. I'm very curious to see and explore real world applications. And, um, and that concludes my, my portion.